Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks for part two of the um, hot water bottle stroke gift bag um, tutorial. Um, this is the one that I've been making so far and we got up to the end of the red part and we're going to be making now, I'm going to be showing you how to do the white and the decoration. So this is the smaller one that I made and with this one I just did a running stitch with a darning needle in a gold thread to make the buckle and with this one I put my uh, my hook through the yarn and I did a chain stitch all the way round into a square. It's actually easier to keep the square if you're doing the running stitch but it's not as bold, but you could go over it in a couple of times. So it is completely up to you how you want to make this buckle. <clears throat> it would probably be easier with the running stitch. But for that, I'm using this gold yarn from um, a shop in the UK called B&M. But any gold or orange, red, <clears throat> sorry, yellow, any kind of colour to make a buckle would be fine. Or you can actually buy a little plastic buckle, buckle and sew it on. Um, I'm also going to be using this Robin Fleece yarn, uh, yarn for the top. Um, now, with this particular one, I did my tie just by using um, a, a, a kind of a chain stitch. And I did... I think it was 90 chain and that's fine to just tighten it up and to tie it off. With the small one I did it in the chunky in black but you can either use um, <clears throat> a chunky yarn, make a, a, a cord or you can use ribbon. You can use anything you want really to, to make that cord but um, I just used a super long chain. So we're going to use um, the black chunky that we made this part with so that's just the usual same chunky yarn that's going to make the buttons you can either do the tie in that or in the red that's left over I've got a glitzy uh, black uh, yarn as well which you could make the buttons with the glitz yarn um, can make the tie with the glitz yarn just basically just anything you want you could even do it with gold if you wanted to or a mixture of the two so um, really the choice is yours, but it's just a cord, so um, you can, you'll be free to sort of choose whatever you want to do with that. So here's the one that we've made earlier. Here, this is the hot water bottle. We'll move that out of the way. <clears throat> Sorry, I've still got a very croaky voice, um, but I'm, I know that I really do need to get these tutorials now done. So uh, please excuse my croakiness. Um, so with this particular one I made it a little bit different to this on this last row here I decreased by five stitches so I did about sort of six or seven uh, half trebles or half double in the US and then I did one together because I didn't want it to be quite so crazily gathered but you don't have to do that and in fact this is much thicker than, than that yarn so if you didn't want to do that you could just maybe go in um, don't go in every stitch because this is ultra thick so you don't need to if you don't, if you don't really want it to bulge out too much it's just a case of you know working it up and seeing if you how you like the look of it if you think it looks like it's just too bulky then you can thin it down a little bit because this fleece yarn although it is a chunky is um, quite it's quite more bulky really than the normal chunky yarn so I'm going to pause the video get what I need and um, start the tutorial okay so I've got my yarn ready and I think I did about four rows on this particular one with the smaller size I think I did um, I did four on this but you could have done three would have been fine so um, I'm just going to join it and it really doesn't matter where you join it, but I'm going to just join it at the side um, where I left off. And I'm using the same six millimeter crochet hook that I used for the whole of this project. And I'm just going to make the join. And for the first, 
I just used both ends for the first chain and that secures that yarn and now I'm going to work over that tail and I'm just going to go in each stitch and do the half treble crochet which is a half double in the US so the same stitch that we used throughout the whole project so I'm just going to gauge how chunky this looks because it will be fatter I think it'll be fine I don't think we need to decrease at all the decreases that I made were in the previous one were in these rows here so if you find that it, you need it to pull in slightly you can do that but obviously not too much if you're getting a hot water bottle into it if you're using it as a gift bag you might not want it to be quite so bulky at the top it's really just your preference so basically we just go all the way round doing the half treble or half double US and working over our tail and go all the way round until we get back to here. So I'm going to pause the video and I will pick you up again when I get back to the start. Okay, so I've got all the way back to the start. So I'm going to slip stitch into there and do a chain and again go round in every stitch. Now it's easy to feel where you were up to and that's, um, a lot of people think it's hard to work with fleece or this eyelash yarn and stuff like that. I find it very easy because you can just any mistakes you make are pretty unforgiving. Uh, sorry, pretty forgiving because <clears throat> you can't really see them, and um, you can just feel and see roughly where your stitches are. So you see, you've gone in that one, another one there. So just go round for four rows. Uh, just repeat this for four rows, and. Um, just check it at th after three, maybe three rows might be sufficient. All you have to do basically is to put in the hot water bottle, slide it in, and you can see if it actually comes up to the top part. You need it to kind of cover it so that when it's on your feet, you don't feel this. So you need it to kind of come up to about here, um, just so that it covers it and doesn't show it. So. That's all you need to do. Basically, go around for three three rows, judge it. If you need another one, do another row. Um, but you just go and slip stitch into this one and carry on until your top uh, snowy part is tall enough um, for your hot water bottle. So I'm going to pause the video and I will pick you up again when I've completed my white part. Okay, so I've done my four rows. So what I'm gonna do is pop in the hot water bottle and make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. And there it is, got nice and covered. So if I pull this in, it's still covering that end. So that's fine, <clears throat> it's long enough. So take it out, <clears throat> get my scissors. and just gonna end off this white colour. I'm going to leave a very long tail to sew it in. I always like a long, long tail. So many times in the past I've left short ones only to live to regret that. <clears throat> so now you just need to decide how you're going to make the buckle. Um, if you can do a chain stitch with like an embroidered chain stitch that would work. Running stitch or by um, working through the um, hot water bottle you can just kind of judge it. I'll show you how I did that. So I'll start anywhere and I'll just pop uh, my hook in and grab some yarn. It's probably not going to be easy to show you. It's easier to do it than it is to show you. So, <clears throat> sorry, I was uh, interrupted there by a phone call. I hope it didn't, um, I'm not sure what it might have done to my phone, but I guess I'll find out on the replay. So, it's a bit tricky to get the first one to come through. There we go. 
and um, after that I'll drop that yarn and just hold the tail and it's just a case of putting your hook in and feeling to take your yarn over and come back through like this and you just keep doing that in a straight line until you have it the size you want but I'm not going to do it that way with this particular one but that's how I did, did it anyway um, I got both um, both strands there so that might not have been a good idea let's take that out just one will do so there we are I just make sure I've got the long one not the short one I was going to do, do a running stitch on this particular one but, you know, this is actually a nice way to do it, so I might carry on. I was going to do it for quickness, because otherwise it would be a... didn't want it to be a too long a tutorial. So you just carry on like that. It's easier when you're holding it yourself, but because I'm showing you, um, I'm holding it in a very strange way. But that's basically how you do it. Just go, You're kind of chaining through the fabric and making sure that you're going in a straight line but it's hard to do when you're doing it on a tutorial so then you just kind of judge it <clears throat> excuse me so you want you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine holes that side so you count the holes this side and you've one two three four five six seven eight nine you kind of just want to end there so we need to do another one two three let's just count that this side Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, so we're in the next... Are we in the ninth? Yeah. So we're going to do three more and then have a look at it and then we'll just make sure... Hang on, it didn't go quite according to plan, did it? Went round the loop twice. It's really difficult when you're holding it like this. When you can pick it up and hold it properly, it's easier, but trying to do it in front of the camera is difficult so there we are that's the three so if we look we just make sure that that's the same one two three four five six seven eight nope we need to take one off so that's the whole point of judging okay so now we just need to change direction keep the stitch open hand in and now we'll go down so we're in this line and it's a bit awkward because this is the problem with doing it this way it, obviously the stitches are in between so it's not always simple to keep it a perfectly straight line but once we've got our line excuse me I've got a cold and I'm trying not to sound too bad so yeah, we keep going all the way down so we're in this line, we go down here and pull it through. It's very difficult from this angle. And you just keep going until you've, you're have you in your third row. So you'll be here. You carry on and then you go along and then you come back up. So it's as simple as that. And because it's difficult to show you on camera, I'm going to pause the video while I finish my square. And I will see you when back at the start. So that's um, how you keep it uh, nice and straight all the way down. So we're into our third row. Now we're going to go across here and up here. But I just wanted to show you that um, it, it, you can keep a straight line. It's harder because obviously the stitches are over, but it does go straight. Um, if it's not straight enough, then obviously um, using a running stitch or a chain stitch when you're embroidering, you can keep that much straighter if you wish but if you're happy with that um, it's quite easy to do so we just need to change direction it's easier off of camera obviously so I'm going to uh, pause the video and I will meet you back at the start as I said so I've got all the way around and like I said if you wanted to make sure that it's much more square then you can run, do a running stitch but I just wanted to show you how I end off so you, you obviously end with just a loop there. You take your hook inside and you go through into this 
here you can grab your loop and pull it through and then when you sew in your end um, you can make sure that it's attached nicely so that's basically how we make the buckle um, it was a little um, little harder to show you um, than it is to do so I'm going to leave a nice long thread there and end off and I'm going to when I sew in my ends I'm going to just clean that little part there up so now I'm going to do a button for the top and a button for the bottom and to do that <clears throat> I'm going to be using the black that is nice and easy <clears throat> excuse me now you can use if you wanted to um, this shiny black which is a DK weight so you get a nice small flatter button but because you're doing that you need to use a smaller hook so I'm going to use a not that one sorry pause the video while I unfortunately they're all the same color that's why it's hard to see them but I've got a four millimeter hook and I'm using this sparkly and for this, I'm going to use a magic loop. I do have a tutorial on how to do the magic loop. And I find my way a lot easier than some I've seen. So I'm going to show you now. Basically, you make a loop. And then you put your hook in, bring the yarn through. And then simply just do a chain. And you've made your loop. Simple as that. Pull it a little tighter so that it's not massive. And for this, I'm going to do another chain because I'm going to make a treble crochet, which in the US is double crochet, and that will make a nice uh, big button. So I'm going to do a total of 11 more, uh, making 12 with the two chain. So that's my third. And they're all going into the loop, and we are going over that tail. So I'm going to pause the video while I continue until I've got my 12, including those two chain. So I've just done my last and now uh, the magic happens. So I'm gonna grab this end here, pull it tight and join with into my top of my two turning chain with a slip stitch. And there we are, we've got a perfect little circle button and now that center will get open up looser until you've secured it but I'm going to leave a really long piece of yarn at the end because that's going to be um, my yarn for sewing it on rather than joining a new yarn I'm just going to attach my darning needle to this piece and sew it on but before I do that I'm going to secure this very tightly because I don't want it working its way open but I need to make another one before I do that in exactly the same way and I'll show you once more I make a loop oh, that twisted make a loop put in my hook and bring up the yarn through it and do a chain and because I want a treble crochet or a double crochet US I do too Pull that slightly tighter so it's not so baggy and work another 11 double crochets in the US or treble crochets in the UK into that ring going over the tail ends of the yarn as well. So again I'm going to pause this video until I've finished this one and I'll pick you up again when I've done my 11 uh, stitches making 12 in total. Okay, so I've done all my stitches. Again, I'm going to pull that ring closed with this end, secure with a slip stitch into the top of my first two chain. And again, leave a very long tail. Not don't need to be too long. I've probably left a much more generous tail than I need to. And end off by pulling that through. And again, see there's just worked its way a little bit looser. So that definitely, definitely needs to be secured 100% before you sew these on. But these have got a little bit of glitz to them. So that's a little bit of extra pizzazz. So, oops, sorry, knocking my camera. 
what I am um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make the tie out of this but because it's very thin I'm going to have to ball up another ball and do two strands to make it chunky enough to be the tie and that way it will match my my buttons you can use you can use the same red chunky if you prefer it to be red or you can just use a ribbon it's up to you but um it's going to do the tie last so <clears throat> i'm just going to tidy up my ends and get ready to sew on my buttons so i'm going to pause the video while i do that and i will pick you up again when it's time to sew them on. right so i've sewn my ends in on the the gold and i'm just going to secure this uh, black center because I don't want that to work its way loose. I'm going to pull it as tight as I can and then just work in. It's very tight, actually. I don't really want it to go too far in. That's it. And what I do normally is to catch that yarn to make a loop, like a little knot. So that should be very secure now. So I can just weave in, weave in these through that center through that center where there's lots of trebles, double crochet in the US terms. Just weave it through them so it's not coming out. I think it's actually pretty safe now. And cut off my yarn. Doesn't matter if it's a little tiny bit showing because it's on the inside. So now all that I have to do is secure the button by sewing it on with the darning needle, which I'll just thread my needle off camera because I find it easier to see it. And push it in. I do struggle with needles. Um, sometimes um, yeah, I find the needle and I think that's got a lovely big eye and then I can't thread it when I get it. So just kind of place it where you're going to want it say maybe there perhaps there because we need to make sure that that one is about the same distance so maybe maybe there I did on my other one do them both at the bottom but this one I did more um, so yeah kind of put it about there and so keeping one hand on the inside just going to do a kind of row of stitches all the way around to secure it, trying to keep it nice and central all the time. Probably should keep my hand in there really, otherwise I'm going to sew it together. I mean, I've done that before. I bet we've all made those kind of mistakes. I'm going to have to do it through the, just do it like this because it's hard to get the direction, but I'm sure you have you know how to do that, just a row of stitching all the way around um, to secure it. And the same with this one, make sure that this one is completely tightened off before you end it and then sew it above. So I'm going to pause the video and um, I will catch back up with you once I've secured my buttons. So there we have, buttons are both sewn on and the buckles on. Um, I'm not particularly happy about that little bit there, but I'm going to tidy that up with a bit of gold thread. And all that I need to do now is to make this uh, tie. And to do that, I'm actually just going to do it in the red now, I've decided, because I can't, um, don't really have a great deal of um, that black yarn. And I wanted to make something else with it, so I'm not going to use it all up making a tie. So <clears throat> I think it looks nicer in red than it does in black. So I'm just going to make 90 chain, quite a simple chain, and then thread it through and tie it up. So I'm going to pause the video while I complete my 90 chain. All right, so I've done my chain, just going to end them off. And now all I need to do is to thread that in and out of these holes, pop in my hot water bottle and secure it. So you can either use, um, I need to sew in my white fluffy tail, 
So you can either or make it like this with your stripe up the top for your belt and the two buttons at the bottom or one at the top, one at the bottom as I've done here or with the small one I'm going to make just uh, a couple of smaller buttons with um, small um, double crochet in the UK terms which is a single crochet in the US um, because they're smaller so I'm just going to do a tiny button but you can use these as um, gift bags if you wanted to rather than hot water bottle covers make a nice little gift bag um, so that's that that's how we do it and uh, thanks for watching if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell and you'll be informed when there are new videos and I've got lots of tutorials coming out um, I've got a Christmas stock in very very soon made with the same stitch uh, so it's nice and tight um, I don't like things that are too holy so watch out for that one coming and some fingerless mittens as well there's quite a few pairs that I've designed that I'm going to be doing some tutorials for so thanks for watching everyone until next time bye bye for now